Okay, good evening. It's a little after seven o'clock and I think we've got a quorum of members, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the City of Urbana's Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. It is Tuesday, May 20th, just after 7 p.m. And we will start with a roll call from FAMI, our clerk. Oh yeah, there are copies of the agenda for folks who want a print copy on the table right at the door. FAMI? I'll wait for Susan. Okay, great. <laughs> Cynthia to get back. All right. Oh. Uh, Brandon Bowersox Johnson. Present. Carrie Brown Tess. Present. Michelle Guerra. Cynthia Hoyle. Present. Audrey Ishi. Present. Susan Jones. Nadine Schmitz. Present. Craig Schonkweiler. Present. Okay, great. We have a quorum. Uh, does somebody want to make a motion to approve with tonight's agenda? So moved. I'll second. Okay, a motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, uh, that carries. We will proceed. Um, we also had approval of minutes from our previous meeting, and so that was the April, um, I'm sorry, the February meeting that came in the packet. Um, I hope people got a chance to review the minutes. They were pretty short and sweet. Did someone want to make a motion to approve them or have any corrections? I'll move the, we approve them. Okay, a motion to approve by Cynthia. Is there a second? Okay, seconded by Nadine. Did anyone have corrections or comments on them? Okay, they looked accurate to me. All in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, thanks, that motion carries. The minutes are approved. Um, we will go on to public input, and I don't see any members of the public here tonight jumping up and down to address us. I um, wanted to, yeah. uh, in the minutes from the first meeting, we had a different date for the uh, Market at Square Bike Rodeo. It was, it listed as May 31st, I believe, and we had moved that up to okay. the 10th, and so I wanted to note that in case uh, somebody got confused by that. Yeah. Great. Any other public input topics? Okay. Uh, we will go on then to new business tonight, and we have an item about uh, input for temporary and permanent bicycle parking, and Mike Brunk, the city arborist, is here. I don't know how many of you commission members have met Mike before, but welcome. Thank you. I have a question. So are you in charge of this because you don't want people to chain their bikes to trees? <laughs> well, question. actually, I'm a bike rider okay. from Public Works, <laughs> but uh, yes, <laughs> that too. Doubly qualified. I don't know. Uh, we have a difficult time stopping that. Mm -hmm. Grow bigger trees, I think. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, they're not very uh, secure uh, ways to lock your bike, because I have seen uh, the smaller trees be cut. Uh, to mm. remove the bike. Um, fortunately, not in our community, but mm. it's pretty easy to cut a three or four inch tree to remove a bicycle if you want one bad enough. Mm. But um, I think the bottom line on that is we need more racks. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm here for tonight is to solicit ideas. I, I don't need the input tonight, but I'm certainly ready to write it down if you have uh, some input. And I'm soliciting ideas for where we can put temporary and uh, permanent racks. We got in about 50 uh, U racks. We've put 14 of them out. Um, we're looking at, um, uh, I'll just pull up this map, on um, North Race up by the school district is an area that we're looking to put a few more racks and then once the Broadway Avenue project is done with all the landscaping and everything we're going to study that corridor between University and Main Street uh, for bike racks. Um, there, while I have the map up, I'll, there's a few other areas that I'll talk about. Uh, these areas in red uh, are what we're looking to uh, study or uh, have been suggested or are going to happen. So I'll start up uh, over at Joomers uh, and we'll kind of work clockwise. And the Joomers uh, folks have offered the corner 
of their parking lot, the northwest corner of their parking lot, uh, as an area that they'd be willing to have a bike corral. So that's a potential bike corral area. Now we have um, a, a really large bicycle, bicycle parking over at the uh, uh, library. And it is 22 spaces, bicycle spaces at the library. So whether this would be a good area for a corral or not, I don't know, but it's been offered. Uh, if we go around into the Lincoln Square area, we are um, continually growing in our need for bicycle parking at the farmer's market. And now we have common ground. So common ground is uh, uh, combining efforts with the city of Urbana and we're going to team up and put a bike shelter in the parking lot there. Hmm. And uh, if you look closely, I've, I believe I've got the designated parking spaces of where that shelter is going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uncertain. I think I dedicated four racks to that. It could be four or five, so eight to ten bicycles. I'm not certain on the size right now. And uh, another area that we've talked about for the farmer's market is due east uh, right across the city building here in this row of parking spaces along Vine Street would maybe make a good spot for um, temporary bike corrals for the farmers market mm -hmm. and what we're looking at mm -hmm. is uh, whether well, Jeff Yaki has come up with a, a very inexpensive uh, kind of triathlon bike rack uh, this is how they st they stage the bikes for the triathletes to just take them off and hmm. and race. But uh, they do work fairly well for uh, temporary locking. And uh, he's tried this out at the Farmer's Market and the Sweet Corn Festival. So we may play with this idea a little bit, but some of the more uh, permanent corrals that we're looking at um, range from our hoop racks or our U racks uh, on a plate to uh, more of a uh, integrated style uh, that's very nice. Uh, now the railing here uh, is on the traffic side and generally this type of rack is about 14 bicycles. So the idea with this, uh, not only in Lincoln Square, these are designed for parking spaces, on-street parking spaces. So we're seriously looking into that and there's a few companies that make uh, these on-street parking um, areas. This is a, another type, it's an Ecoflex hoop type of thing and basically it's just racks set up on an on-street parking with our own bollards and parking bumpers. Uh, but here's another one of those racks by Madrax which is uh, where we've gotten some of our U racks. It's not a very good picture because it's so shiny, it's hard to see the structure, but mm. it's, it's basically the same kind of corral. Um, and I believe this is taking up one, here. one, one I believe one parking space. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Yankee has a varsity type bike rack and, and th these, uh, the beauty of this particular type of rack, they've studied with them uh, this style on campus is that they have a place to put uh, the wheel. So when you're locking your bicycle up, uh, the drawbacks to our U racks, a lot of times, especially with the U locks, that they'll fall over and become kind of um, mm -hmm. unkept, especially if we're trying to get a lot of bicycles in one area. This varsity type rack, which you may see this summer, uh, Jeff has five of these. We're going to be taking them around town. And we're going to be placing them much like this in, in uh, an area creating a corral. And we're just going to try them out in different areas to see how people like them, to see if people like the parking in the areas that we're um, um, trying these at. So it'll be in parking lots. Uh, but this, this is a varsity rack. Uh, and it has a, uh, they go at a certain dimension. You can set them at an angle, so if you have a, a, a fairly narrow sidewalk, you can set them at an angle and still get your four or five feet of clearance for pedestrian traffic. So they're, they're very versatile. It's another rack that we're looking into. Some other pictures of how this uh, varsity rack works. You can put your bicycle in frontwards or you can put it in backwards. 
and they're staggered. If you have two bicycles next to each other frontwards, the handlebars are supposed to be staggered enough that they don't conflict. Mm. They make them freestanding or they put a plate uh, when we design this in a corral so they'll all be lined up um, in a certain angle. So that's the varsity rack. And here's um, how they look when they're organized. Mm -hmm. uh, and it fits a lot of bicycles in a tight space. Mm -hmm. So this is probably our, our most efficient use of space for bicycle racks. Another area that I'll present here is uh, we're looking at adding bicycle parking to the city building just to the, um, I guess it would be the south of the fire station. And we're looking at, I think, four racks in a small space. When I started looking at this park, and I'm going to be presenting it, uh, the idea to our streetscape committee is this would be a perfect park. Well, it'd be a perfect bike park. Mm -hmm. So uh, with a little play on words, this swooping sidewalk here has plenty of space to, to pour some concrete and to make it a permanent bike parking space. And I think it would serve the purpose for the city building. We may be able to get 20 racks in there. There'd be 40 bicycles. And with the crosswalk right there to the farmer's market, I think it'd be an ideal space. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's that little squiggly line you see on your maps uh, mm -hmm. down in what we call uh, engineering park. But we could call it bike park, and um, it'd make a nice little parking space. So uh, the map, back to the map. Uh, I haven't checked all the spaces out, but this is uh, uh, our most up-to-date. I have to verify each of the parking areas, and I, I didn't get to all of that before my summer started. So uh, this is in process. We hope to put this online soon uh, for people to know where our parking is. Uh, I was surprised we have uh, quite a few parking spaces. I estimate we have close to 300 bicycle parking racks, or I'm sorry, spaces. Um, uh, the racks, I didn't total, 138 racks, and it, uh, they'll accommodate about 291 bicycles. So what I'm looking from you all is uh, if you know of an area that you want us to target, or if you see something down the road, to email me or send me a note or, or bring it up at your next meeting and provide it to Craig, and we'll study it to see um, if we can get racks in those areas. So we'll, I think we're going to be using a variety of racks, probably our U racks. We have a, a number of those left. The varsity rack I like. I can see us using those in town because they've been a hit on campus. And these bike corrals uh, for both temporary, well, the bike corrals probably would be temporary um, mm -hmm. for a seasonal or special event kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I have yeah, a question. go ahead. Um, have you? done any work with NTD to maybe collaborate some of these spots with maybe some of the more extent the further places to that's a very good idea no I haven't I'll make note of that yeah other comments or questions Cynthia I have several I will uh, comment on the question about uh, MTD since I work with them it's not clear that there's a demand to um, park bikes for a day at stops on the periphery. Uh, generally, people put them on the bus and come in. There is, however, uh, demand at Illinois Terminal and probably at the courthouse, destinations where we have a lot of um, activity and people are sometimes changing uh, buses, et cetera. But it's something that uh, is worth looking at and discussing with them. So I had um, comments and questions. One was we have uh, our standards for bike parking now and, and based on the assessment that you have here, we have a number of substandard bike racks that are still in place. Do we have any plans for replacement of those as we go forward with uh, better bike parking like the wave? I don't think the wave racks fit our guidelines, do they? I don't, I don't believe that they do, yeah. Yeah, and so I was wondering about um, whether or not we have any 
uh, plans for, for replacement and circle racks uh, as well. Although I don't remember seeing very many of those on city property. There's one over at the library, but I, I, it's somewhat okay. hidden um, okay. because we have a sea of parking over there right now with U-Racks, but it's over in the main parking okay. lot on south side of the um, library. Okay. Th there isn't um, a, a plan uh, uh, to replace those uh, racks mm -hmm. just because there isn't a plan yet. Okay. Uh, and that's what we're working on, but certainly I think that could be a priority for us. And what, what there's been thought on some of those older racks is that they still serve a purpose, so uh, we certainly wouldn't want to take them out until we have something to put back in their place. But sure. um, I think we've systematically worked some of those out of the system, but that's mm -hmm. a good point. We should, we should note these on the map and maybe prioritize those for uh, our standardized um, bike rack that's acceptable where they'll work it's possible you may have uh, for example on the sidewalks downtown you need the bikes to be able to park parallel <coughs> to the sidewalk um, and I don't think we have any hoop uh, or wave racks down there I also wanted to note the that we're all very excited about the specialty bike racks in front of Champagne cycle we think they're mm. fabulous Mm -hmm. you, you can thank Peter for that, the, yes. the cycle, yes, champagne cycle owner. Yes, I do cycle want to owner. thank him for that because <laughs> I think they're marvelous. Um, then the other question was for temporary racks. They work wonderfully well, and they're heavily used at the market. I think Jeff told me they had like 200 bicyclists uh, at several of the markets this month with the weather being nice. The question is, we don't really lock them up there. We like roll them up and, and leave them because there's somebody there. So my question is, would there be a staff person anywhere around? Is it possible to have any sort of uh, you know, supervision? Not that we are guaranteeing the safety of the, of the bikes, but having somebody there. And that's just a question I wanted to, to pose. I think it's a really good idea to have that uh, temporary parking because people will chain them up to the trees and the landscaping. Mm -hmm. And because I don't think we have enough bike parking in a convenient location. That's one of the things we do have this wonderful amount of parking, but location is critical. And if you're not close enough to a location that defeats the purpose of people biking there, that it's convenient. So they won't park somewhere and walk two blocks. Would well, you think the park across the street would be convenient enough? I do think that that's a, not a bad idea because it, you can just cross with the, the signal and some people might actually prefer crossing that on foot than with their bike. Mm -hmm. And so they might park over here and walk back and forth as a way to, to mm -hmm. deal with that. So I, yeah, I love the idea of having some bike parking there and it, also puts it out front because right now you have some parking in back but people don't know it's back there and so they're even chain up wherever if they come to the front of the building well i think signage has got to be a part of our mm -hmm. new system too yes uh, so yeah. that that should help if we can get signs out for for an area like uh the park across the street mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. very evident yeah uh, to answer your question about staff watching temporary racks i can't answer that but i certainly can ask the question my guess is uh, part of the problem with setting up the farmer's market is it's minimally staffed. Mm -hmm. So our, you know, we have uh, discussed numerous times the idea of bringing racks out to the farmer's market, but it's just not um, uh, feasible uh, as big and heavy as most racks are mm -hmm. to, to uh, take them there before the market and pick them up after the market. Mm -hmm. Now that these temporary um, uh, racks may solve that problem but they're not as secure as a permanent right. rack right now whether our staff can be right next to that rack or the rack can be set up next to the city tent um, that would solve the problem yeah it, it may solve the problem whether that person in the tent could be there you know 100 percent of the time i don't know well um, i have to say the volunteers at the ccb booth are going back and forth. I mean, it's not that there's any guarantee that someone's guarding your bike. Mm -hmm. And we don't have, it's not valet parking in the sense of you're handed a number that goes with your bike that some places have. It is really just that there's somebody nearby keeping an eye on things. Now these, uh, are you talking about these um, 
this system? Yes, I okay. am. I've used now, that a number of times. Okay, now these, mm -hmm. you can, Jeff was showing me these, uh, you can actually lock your bicycle to these. You can, yes. Now it's Absolutely. not, it's not as secure, but w if we keep thinking about this, we may be able to make some kind of a system here where you can't, you know, um, slide the bike off the end of it I guess is what yeah. I'm thinking. well I'll have Very to easily. confess one of the reasons why I love the temporary parking is because I do not have to lock my bike mm -hmm. and most of the time nobody bothers it I mean our market there's so many people there and there are so many people around that if you're not there for two hours um, it's I'm not going to say that you're guaranteed that your uh, bike will not be messed with, but no one has ever bothered my bike. Well, the concern I would have is, the, even though staff is there with all the people mingling, mm -hmm. is they mm -hmm. could never keep straight whose bicycles, whose exactly. bicycle. And if somebody came and took a bicycle, right. I don't know that they would know any different. Right. Yeah. I think we would probably need a sign that says, you know, part, your bike is uh, parked here on your own. I don't, other cities must have something like this mm -hmm. that... Uh, it's not being guarded. You know, mm -hmm. Somehow that has to be conveyed. Mm -hmm. But it was just a thought because when the CCB folks are there, it is truly uh, enjoyable to bike up and not have to go through figuring out how to chain it because I always have a, I almost always have sure. a cart. Right. I don't chain my cart up. Mm -hmm. That's a really difficult maneuver and no one usually bothers it. I think there's just so many people around. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, um, in terms of locations, on uh, Saturdays in particular, what to do with your bikes in, in front of Mirabelle. There's always mm -hmm. a lot of traffic there and not really very much of an opportunity for locking your bike. And in front of uh, CoLab, and the the uh, coffee and pizza place we need some now we just put Rex there we oh, have you did. we have 14 spaces uh, on right there on race and with the new specialty racks in front of champagne cycle we have a total of seven racks there too so right on that corner we mm -hmm. we just installed I don't know it's the beginning of May I believe I see them chained up okay. to all kinds of things right in front of CoLab because people will bike up there and they may not necessarily see them around the corner so if they're not on they're right in front of I mean they're practically right they there are. now yeah we left the there 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 is going to be an outdoor cafe or Cabana right I'm looking forward some to that spaces there so we couldn't we didn't want to put it in front of that okay but there's um, I can't think of the new establishment that's down there with the awning Mm -hmm. uh, there's bike parking on either side of that okay and then as you go further down um, past uh, the uh, cafeteria mm -hmm. there's a, a few more and then okay. there's one down by the guitar shop he he was gonna let me know if he wanted a second one down there but there's seven there all together right okay. along that space okay. okay now one thing that we we wrestle with and I I don't know what to do on the section of um, Main Street that's between Broadway and Race is fitting in more bicycles without mm -hmm. being in the way of opening car doors. Mm -hmm. So we have to study that a little further mm -hmm. to see if we can uh, maneuver a few more U racks on those spaces or maybe switch over to Varsity Rack. We have to play with that this summer uh, to see if there's enough space people can still get out and not swing their car door into a rack. Have or you a bicycle. all looked at the racks that attach to parking meters? Um, we uh, have been fought uh, with that idea that, um, and I, I can bring it up again, but the problem with uh, bicycles on the meters is access to the meters. Parking enforcement's been opposed to that, and uh, um, mostly elderly people are opposed to having bicycles near, near the meters. Hmm. Have you, I, I would be curious, other communities who have used them, if they have found them to be an obstruction well, it's when the bicycles fall over. Now, if you can keep the bike, uh, you know, see. tight up against the pole, okay. um, that's the issue solved. But it, once they fall over and, you know, they go mm -hmm. this way and that way, mm -hmm. then it becomes an obstacle. 
Yeah, I've had less trouble getting to my meter with that than I have with snow drifts, but those sure. I suppose are right. going to be less frequent. <laughs> yeah. so. um, but the varsity mm -hmm. rack may be a solution there that we need to play with. And of mm -hmm. course, um, I don't know whether we'll get approval to try uh, corral by corrals on that section, but that would be an obvious mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we had a big area like well uh, as you know in uh, Portland it, it's a voluntary program and the merchants request that the parking space in front of their business be converted to a bike corral and many of them have found that it's beneficial because instead of one customer in front of their store they can get 10 or 12 with the racks and my understanding in Portland is that they had a very long list of 50 or more uh, businesses that had requested the parking space to be converted hmm. so that's uh, and that was several years ago so it might be worth uh, asking the the planner there uh, Roger Geller and he he would be happy to provide that information I think in terms of the varsity racks I know that that's campus has some on Goodwin uh, right across from espresso yeah and they were wiped out with the s somebody pushed snow into them oh okay and I, they may be back up uh, Jeff just told me that last week but yes that's okay. that's where they were trying them out on okay. campus and I think they were a big success okay. yeah so maybe where we have those where there's might be a possibility of snow causing a problem we need to put the little things in like we do for curbs and other and and uh, I know we do that for sure. fire hydrants so that they don't get uh, run over in the winter time. That may be a, a thought that we have to have because we don't want to have to reinstall them every year. Well, yeah, or you know, <laughs> replace them. Worse right. Yet. Yeah. 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 Okay, Audrey. Um, there's also a rack right there on the uh, west side of Busey Bank or east side of Busey Bank across from Number 14. There's a small. Um, like a, I can't remember if it's a inverted U or a, I think it is. Oh, the uh, the Busey Banks. Uh, yeah, on the on the okay. east side of Busey Bank, and and I know. I was wondering why there are racks planned for um, Broadway down by Black Dog and across the street, but not further south hmm. in mm -hmm. that block where there's always bikes chained to all the parking meters there. Oh, um, don't, miss, don't let, let me mislead you on the red marks. It's just areas that we have targeted to look at because of requests, so we're open to any areas in downtown besides these red areas. Because I know the parking meters are always full of bikes right there. Um, you know, between Water and Main on Broadway. Further okay. south, further right. south than these red marks. Right. Stop right. at. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure what businesses are targeted. You know, on the further north side there. And none at this point. We well, want. We, we want. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to look at one, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the school district on North Race, they have requested racks, so that that mm. is specific on North Race. But at this point on Broadway. The, nothing specific we just need to look at the area yeah and I'll include it uh, well we'll probably just do the whole corridor yeah yeah from, I think from Lincoln Square uh, south or north to University right any other committee member comments are, are there Craig? other areas in town that we should consider um, you know, I, I guess I think of Sunny Crest area, you know, potentially, um, potentially maybe areas up north of town. I mean, other than just the central business district that we can think of. Well, there are a number of businesses I would like to have bike racks close to their doors. And I don't know whether we have the ability to offer a program that some communities have, which is that the city will provide them with the rack if they will install it in the location agreed upon between them and the business owner so that we get the bike parking close to the door. Uh, one of the locations I see bikes chained to the bench routinely is at uh, the Carl on Windsor. The bike rack is about as far from the door uh, it's in a parking space out in the corner and I never see a bike there I see them chained to the bench and the trees 
-hmm. So if they were willing to put something uh, closer to the door, I, uh, and there are some other businesses down there too, I think people would like to have bike parking close to the door, but it's on their property. It's not public property. Carl on Windsor, give me uh, some... Behind Meyer. Right. Oh, behind oh, okay. Meyer. Over yeah. at Meyer Ridge. Yes. East of okay. Meyer. Yes, yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. And if the city it is private property, but if the city can help by providing some of the equipment and the private property owner can agree to mm -hmm. install it in one of our locations that we agree on, it's totally worth giving up a few U racks if they're willing to put them by the door. It's a good idea. Yeah. And I'm very excited about covered bike parking. Uh, common ground surely doesn't have enough uh, space. One of the questions I think we are going to come up against, and I actually don't know the answer, is the number of bikes using carts mm -hmm. and how you chain them up and how you have space for them, especially at grocery stores like Common Ground and at the market, we have a lot of people bringing children and shopping and loading carts of various kinds. And I don't know the solution to that. I can ask around. I know people who mm -hmm. live in places with many more bikes than us, so I could ask. Well, mm -hmm. the one thing we, we need to do is provide the space, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than your, your six-foot layout for a bicycle, right. we need to think about bicycles with trailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you don't like to block two parking spaces for right. bikes when you come in with your mm -hmm. cart and you don't want to leave it sticking out so people trip over it. And so well, sometimes I haven't even, you know, locked it. I roll it up in front of Common Ground under the window and go in. Mm -hmm. Are they, uh, how are they attached to bicycles? I mean, it's with a nut and bolt? It varies. Some of them clamp onto the seat post. Uh, mine has a... Um, piece that you attach through the axle and it has a pin that goes through some of them lock on and so there are I think a variety of ways that they attach to bikes I don't know if there's but are a most of them quick release or many of them are not it, quick release it's easy to take them off at least the ones I've seen and used I hmm. the, you Charlie has one isn't it easy to take off yeah okay <laughs> interesting well you and Charlie have one I guess I shouldn't say but um, we, we've had three or four. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the solution to that unless people carry a cable. You know, it's the only thing I can think of of cabling mm -hmm. it to the bicycle or cabling it to the rack. But yeah, we know, can't we, solve we, that problem. But we can at least give them space. Right, yeah. space. And, we, mm -hmm. and keep our minds open and and research that kind of a thing. How are the communities are doing it? You, yeah. you said was it Portland? Mm -hmm. Was Roger Geller G E L L E R? You can tell him I gave, gave you his name. <laughs> Very progressive community. Yeah. Uh, Craig? So, Mike, Mike, could you just clarify for everybody? Um, you, you know, you were talking about these U racks and, and the temporary ra uh, corrals and everything, but where those came from as far as who supplied those and that? This isn't the city supplying that. This was actually. Well, the city, uh, we're looking into, the city's looking into buying corrals. Okay. Uh, Jeff Yaki is providing the varsity rack for us to try out this summer, this particular rack. He has five of them that we're going to set up in a corral style, and we're going to move it around um, this summer. We're going to try it a certain amount of time in different parking lots near different businesses, maybe even on the sidewalk. I, I don't know. He's supplying these. Okay. That's sweet. And we have a set budget uh, every year uh, that allows us to buy so many racks. Um, we may be able to afford to get a few of the varsity racks if it works out this, which I think it will. So what I envision happening is that, that we'll uh, look to decide what percentage of our bike rack money goes to varsity racks, what percentage goes to corrals, and what mm -hmm. percentage goes to U racks. But after our study, uh, we can go to council and say, well, th these are the racks that we need. Um, here are our priorities um, if we need to, if they're outside the funding that we have presently. Mm -hmm. And then okay. if, um, if the public has, um, you know, wants to make input, 
How would they do so? Uh, they should contact me, uh, would be the easiest. So they could call Public Works at 384-2342, and they could leave me a voicemail, uh, or they can email me at mjbrunk at urbanaillinois.us. Those would be two ways. Okay. Or they could mail in their ideas. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I'd say it might be great to solicit, um, if you're willing to send an email to the UBA, to have them blast out to, their, to the business owner list, because they curate a pretty good list of business owners all over Urbana, I mean, downtown, but also Philo Road and elsewhere. Have them send out an email list that says, hey, business owners, if you're, you know, the city of Urbana has bike racks, we're looking at what locations need them the most. If you need racks for your patrons near your business, give us a call. Um, UBA probably is a great channel to get that out to Good businesses idea. and see. Cynthia? I was going to say, among the uh, bike corrals that you uh, showed us, I liked the look of the Varsity um, Corral the best. Some of the rest of them, I don't think they're that good looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a personal like. Uh, th th this particular style is probably out of our price range, but the Madrax was very close to this isn't. Um, one thing that's happening with bike corrals, uh, some of the companies, I believe, I don't know this for a fact, are patenting their ideas, and then the prices are tripling, which happened with this particular rack. But I, wh why I brought this up is I like the bright color of this rack because th this is a new area, and if we, we can get a bright mm -hmm. color like a bright orange and we stick it out there, it'll be mm -hmm. readily seen. So I, I like the color of we something like that. Now, the, the, the question is, um, do we need um, the railing around the traffic side? I, I think a lot of communities want to have the bicyclists come in from the other side. They don't want to have them gathering in the street traffic to park. And then, of course, while they're messing with their bicycles, they don't want somebody to accidentally back into traffic. So there's that thought with this railing. Um, some of these other ideas, uh, for example, this particular area is defined as a corral, but it doesn't really serve the purpose of containing the people. It'll keep traffic out, but that's not really the issue. It's keeping the, the mm -hmm. cyclists out of traffic when they're not uh, cycling. Mm -hmm. So some of these ideas, but you know. this works because you have in the one that showed the varsity, too, with the um, this, yeah. bumpers, it serves a similar purpose, and one could argue more, uh, it more carefully or more effectively provides protection than a metal bar in that usually people don't drive over bumpers. Um, and I think it's just less intrusive into the appearance of the environment. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what people have to say about it mm -hmm. in terms of appearance. Yeah. I like these bumpers the best because mm -hmm. this last example just because, yeah, it really does stop you from accidentally rolling your bike out into traffic or, you know, accidentally stepping out into traffic because it is a physical separation that's helpful. But the fact that it has gaps is helpful, too, because... Mm -hmm. You really might want to exit this bike parking area through one of those gaps to get back on the roadway. And we don't, in a lot of places, we don't want to encourage cyclists to ride on the sidewalk. So we don't want to encourage yeah. them to have to be forced to sure. to leave the bike corral by riding down the sidewalk on Main Street. That's really not safe. That's so, true. I, I think we'll just have to feel it out. I, yeah. I'm torn because, you know, I don't know um, if we really want people darting out from a parking space into traffic or we want people cutting through these things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and I think we need to talk to people like Roger that have these in Portland that have experience with them and see what the ups and downs are. Yeah. That yeah. would help. I have a Quick question. With some of these, and this kind of piggybacks off of what you were just saying, um, when you're thinking about the carts and, and just families, and I see some of these barriers as being very difficult if you have a child and you're trying to get to, you know, the market or whatever. 
Like um, if the, you're, uh, the, these guys here. Uh, yeah, or, and we might just be needing to think about um, like more family-oriented places in some locations, whereas you know places that we might not see a lot of people dropping, you know, transitioning with kids, um, maybe not worrying about that so much. But so uh, what you're saying, so I'm clear, a rack like this with the railing around three sides of it that's packed full of bicycles may be a little too difficult for uh, family riding with kids mm -hmm. on the bicycles. Especially would this with a cart. Mm -hmm. and a cart? Mm -hmm. Where would this be more? Would this be more, or is it just the corral idea I altogether? I, you know, I, I, when you were talking about that little bike parking spot, I almost think that if you've got a entourage of of carts and what have you. Um, Things like that might be better, and it, you might look at something more open altogether mm -hmm. for places like the elementary school where mom's riding with their kindergartner and Timmy, who's three, or you know, whatever, mm -hmm. um, where they can be flexible and kind of given a little bit more space to deal with, yeah. you know, what they need to do. Okay. Yeah. The railing would be difficult. With a rack. The, you'd have to get on the sidewalk. And, and also, I was wondering if, if mobility was an issue at all. I mean, these look a lot, the, the ones like the varsity with the, with the bumpers and stuff seem a lot more easy to move around um, portability than, than the Darrow Cycle Stall, which seems like it would be quite a, quite a uh, production. You mean if you and wanted to take it to a new location? Yeah. yeah. So Well, all of these, uh, the varsity that I have up now, uh, you can attach that to a plate um, but uh, to secure them, but they'll, you know, you would unattach it when you would want to move it, you'd move each rack separately. Um, the only reason you'd put it on a plate is so somebody wouldn't uh, steal the rack. Uh, and the two end ones uh, would be, well, they'd just be bolted, all five of them would be bolted on a plate and, and that would be prohibitive for somebody taking it unless they really wanted it. <laughs> uh, these guys come apart. So the oh. sides come off, uh, comes, yeah, so they bolt um, in, into pieces. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's going to take, I think, you know, w with the corrals, it's going to be best played out if it's a seasonal. Besides us experimenting this summer with different locations, if we're going to pick a corral area, it's going to be a seasonal location. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to have to move these every couple weeks. Um, yeah. But you know when we get with the farmers market we are looking at putting something there uh, either seasonally uh, or permanent if we can think of the park or on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have three types of uh, possibilities with that and, and they'd be three different types of racks. Mm -hmm. This would be more of a seasonal kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did any of you see this guy on Bike to Work Day? <laughs> oh, yes. That's great. I want to see him get up on that thing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's for the younger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you for all your yeah, input. Yeah, thank you, Mike, for looking into this and for taking feedback on it. And, um, yeah, I know you've given your email address and phone number so people can get in touch with Mike Brunk at Public Works with any more comments on this. That's great. Okay, um, well that was our only business item for tonight, uh, but we have announcement time for any board member announcements, especially maybe let's start with any upcoming activities. I know most of the bike to work month uh, festivities have passed us, but um, are there any announcements of upcoming bike events in the community? Yes. We have the uh, Ride of Silence uh, coming up. It's next, tomorrow. oh, it's tomorrow. Next, tomorrow is next okay. Wednesday. And that is a ride that uh, memorializes uh, people who have been uh, killed while riding their bikes. I know that this pr um, meeting is televised later, so it perhaps will not be televised in time for people to participate. 
Um, there are still some bike to market opportunities and if you uh, go online and sign up for bike to market you may still get a bike month t-shirt and we have a bike rodeo coming up at playing it safe june 7th there's a very large event playing it safe that carl organizes and sponsors at the fairgrounds and the bike rodeo is part of that there will also be uh, helmet sales uh, for ten dollars a piece do you still need volunteers for Absolutely. the June seventh? <laughs> That's Saturday, June seventh, right? Yes. Playing it safe. That's a great event. So if anybody, can the commission or anybody watching at home has some time, June seventh to volunteer, um, who could they get in touch with? Uh, they can go to the uh, Facebook page for CU Safe Rest School or Champaign County Bikes. They can also go to the CU Safe Rest School Project website. Is it posted on the Champaign County Bikes website as well? I think it's on the calendar. Champaign County Bikes has a calendar they maintain of events, and I believe it's posted there as well. And the link, I believe it may be there. Okay. Any other announcements from board members? Um, Craig. We're still taking public input on the uh, bicycle master plan update. So it's very important that uh, this is the chance to voice your opinion. Um, so you can do that through the city website. If you go to um, even just select residents and then on the left side, it'll come up bike Urbana. And then there's a whole slew of links, but in there, there's a link to the the master plan update which is a special website and then people can comment on that uh, mm -hmm. the uh, recommendation so far and there's kind of a big form I mean there's a lot of if you want to take a half hour and go through it it's really valuable to do you there's a there's pictures to look at and then forms where you can really give input and say oh you know I would like this street or I would like this project or this is my top priority yes okay any other announcements I know I wanted to briefly just bring something up under under the announcements time here about um, when topics come to City Council that are bike related. I know some people were aware that the Broadway Avenue conversation and sort of the plans for doing Sharrows on Broadway Avenue was approved by City Council maybe a Monday ago. Um, and I wanted to just express the suggestion that we have some notification. I don't know that folks on BPAC were alerted or that we sent that out to the BPAC list, but it might be good when there's bike related stuff to let this commission know. So you, you know, you could go to city council and, um, and speak up about it. And maybe for a similar list that would allow anybody in the community to say they want to sign up. I know maybe people like Jeff at CCB or others in the community would want to get alerts of when bike or ped topics are coming to city council or, or coming before traffic commission even, um, and it might be good to get the word out. I know this time it took a few, a few folks by surprise and some notification would be great. So I don't know, Craig and Famey, what's the easiest way to do, you know, an email sign up or a way people can get notices or somewhere to watch, but. Let us look into it and uh, yeah. maybe we can talk to our IT people and if there's a way that we can get it through the website. Oh. I know Kuwatz has a uh, way that people can sign up and be emailed agendas routinely. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it might be more difficult to have an email list that you're supposed to only send them when there's a particular topic on the agenda. That might be uh, more difficult. But if we could do that, I think it would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. I think at the, at the very minimum, we can just, city staff will notify BPAC. Yeah, the very and then we can try to get the word out yeah, beyond that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Any other announcements or board member comments? None? Okay. Well, then that is it for our items. We have a slot for future topics. I don't know if anybody had any future topic requests that we covered upcoming meetings. Okay. And I know we'll coordinate with Craig and the staff, obviously, on when our next meeting is. I know with summer schedules, we'll, um, we'll you know, usually we cancel one. We meet every other month, cancel the intervening months, but it'll depend a little on staff vacations and whatever of whether we end up meeting in June or July and whether it still is the third Tuesday as usual or not. So 
we'll be in touch about that. Any other comments? I was wondering if we should ask if there's any additional public input. Oh yeah, we did have another audience member walk in the door. Any public input before we adjourn tonight? No, okay, okay. Okay, well then that is the end of our agenda. I will declare us adjourned. Thank you all very much.